Hi Maya, good afternoon. It's so nice to connect with you and I'm so excited to be hearing from you, another artist. I'm excited about this conversation. I'm really looking forward to discussing art as a fuel for change and action. Environmental issues, especially like climate change, that's something that's going to impact every area of human life. When I think about the role of art, it is about telling these stories, about humanizing these stories, humanizing the stakes of what, what's happening and how we all have to be a part of the solution. I will tell you that as a 40-year-old in New York City, so many of my peers right now, when they think about climate change, they can very tangibly relate it to their children. What are we leaving behind for the generations that are coming after us? And how do we as humans begin to change and transform our behaviors, our practices, to be healthier in relationship to the earth that we inhabit. You know, Generation Z, we have a lot of pressure to be the ones to fix everything. And we want intergenerational collaboration. Like this is an all hands on deck situation. As a member of Gen Z, I feel like so many young people really feel like it could be too late. The role of optimism in our lifetime and in the, on the earth I think it's a critical one. I think optimism is a practice and we have to show up and actually believe that we matter. And so in my practice, I'm always asking the question, gosh, what impossible things can we do together that we can only do together? You know, one of my dreams is to turn Times Square into a park that has trees and a river that's going through it. When I think about urbanism and the evolution of cities, I wish there were ways for our streets and our traffic to not get in the way of public space. How can we collaborate with other people to activate that? How can we be a catalyst for change? And also understanding how we can encourage other people who are in, in higher positions of power to really do that same thing. So Maya, when we think about multinational corporations like Volvo, who have often been a part of the challenge, a part of the problem, how do we think about those organizations, those companies being a part of the solution? I think there's a major responsibility on large corporations to make a really tangible shift because they have been contributing to this problem in so many ways and they have to implement these solutions as soon as possible. To understand that sustainability, it's not a trend, it's not a fad, it's not a niche market to appeal to, it is becoming the new standard of business. And be transparent and be authentic and accountable with your consumer base. What are their practices of finding the resources to make, for example, with Volvo, the cars? Where are all the parts for the car coming from? The journey of those parts to the factories where they're being made, the relationship of those factories to the neighborhoods that they're in. One of the things that I really appreciate and that I love about Volvo's history, they created the technology for the three-point seat belt. They actually shared that technology with other companies so that all drivers could be safe. I think this kind of thinking is essential towards the future. We're at a time where we've never faced a challenge this big before, but we also have so many incredible solutions. So important that we consider these things, not just for the sake of the, the bottom line of the company, but for the sake of the bottom line of the earth.